Yo ho ho! Welcome back to the Worm Yo's. I think we should go take a look at that uh, kitchen. What do you think? It's been uh, hard to get back working on this when the days are so freaking short. The weather is often miserable and I'm trying to be a little protective of my back uh, the last three, four, or five months, so if it's not feeling a hundred percent, I'm just not going to go out and try to lift stuff that uh, I can't really lift by myself. There's no sense uh, getting hurt and shutting things down for weeks if there's uh, other fun stuff to do around here, and there's always fun stuff to do. In fact, I got my hands on some new fun stuff right here, but you you don't want to see it, do you? No, you want to wait? Okay, we'll wait. I was just looking out the window at the. Uh, uprights out there and the concrete pads trying to think of what we have to do next and I can't remember I thought that I'd uh, leveled the top of those maybe not maybe I just rough leveled it so I could get the the logs about the right height but we got to go out there with the laser of course there's some snow on the ground it's the middle of the day so it's going to be hard to see that wimpy laser but I say we go try it if it doesn't work uh we'll just do something else fun here for the day and then we'll go out there around uh, sunset the other hold up, as you guys know, is uh, my <laughs> my big stack of chainsaw mill boards has been frozen together for a couple months. I get in, I got in there like a week ago. We had a warm up for several days and took the tarp off. And the first two boards I was able to get off, but you know it's it's so much insulation. By the time you got to the middle of the stack, it was still frozen. And the weather's been kind of back and forth now for a while, so. I don't know. I have a feeling we can get them apart now. Oh yeah, we definitely didn't uh, leave all these out. I'm now remembering when we uh, poured the pads in here, you know, they're all different levels. That's higher, I think. So the log was a little bit shorter. I think the ones back here are a little bit longer. So that was all the level leveling we did with a string. Every time I flatten out the top of a bunch of logs like this for a foundation, I always wish I was doing this when it's dark and I've never done it. You know, when I get working on this stuff, I just want to work on it. I don't want to I don't come out here, look at it, go like, okay, I'll wait nine hours and, you know, get all warm and comfy and then come back out here when it's dark. Oh, wow. I'm yammering away. There are a whole bunch of deer that are sleeping during the day right here, right on the hillside, and they have been for at least a month that I've seen them. They just lazily get up and walk away. I don't know if you can see them through there. One there, one down there. I'm always a little surprised at how slowly they move away, but that'd be like waking me up at uh, 3 a.m. I wouldn't be in a hurry to go anywhere either. I grabbed the laser level and I really should have come out here earlier, grabbed it and put it over the heater for a bit. I can't imagine that uh, the cold wouldn't affect the double A's in there or whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, it seems kind of bright. I don't know that it's going to outside. One thing that'd be nice, and I'm sure the more expensive laser levels do, do this is, it'd be nice if it was a much wider beam. So if you want to shoot nine stumps, you got to move it a whole bunch of times. Also, I got to draw the line all the way. You guys have seen this done. You should just end up moving it a ton of times. If this happens to be your first visit to Ringworm, I'll drop a link here. You can go back uh, right at the beginning of the winter is when I cleared this whole hillside, cut a whole bunch of trees, uh, got out the chainsaw mill, milled up this whole stack of lumber. And then of course we rushed, rushed to get the concrete, little concrete pads in there before everything froze. This here was all trees. The whole hillside was trees. It's basically no sky here. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Not bright enough, and I don't know if it's because it's cold, but uh, you know, they it auto levels itself. But you can get the laser on the log, tip this down, and actually move the laser. It should not do that. You should have some free play to tip this, and the laser stays in the same spot. All right, we got to warm this up. And you know, like I said, I just was really hoping I could come out in the middle of the night and do this. Oh, I slipped on the last time I did this. I put the chunk of ice right here. Oh, now it's frozen, frozen to the ground. This is gonna be uh, quite a bone yard here. We 
need a good hanging tree. Always gotta have a hanging tree. All right, let's figure a plan here for the lumber we got. As always, I have no idea if this will build the whole thing or not. It is kind of an enormous pile of lumber. So we, well, let's look. How did we uh, build this thing? I think this side is like 17 or something, and then this side is 12. So we're gonna do a frame around it. We'll make it wicked beefy on the outside. Oh, and then we have to do another giant beefy one through the middle there. That's gonna help support the uh, floor joists. They're all gonna go this way. You'd have to have some huge floor joists to span a full 12 feet, especially since there's gonna be stuff sitting on here. Well, maybe all the support posts for the roof are gonna be over the feet. But I find putting one giant support in the middle of this makes it so your joists only have to span six feet. And doing that, you can really save a lot of lumber. So I'll probably do it like I think I remember doing the cabin. We'll take the smallest of the full boards, which would be, maybe we'll use these for the beefy frame, and that'll leave us with these huge ones that we can rip down the middle and get two floor joists out of. So we need one, two, three, six, eight and a halfers, two 12 footers. I just measured the long side, it's actually 19. So we need almost 10 footers. I think we planned ahead well enough to have these 10 feet. They're exactly 10 feet. Man, I am a great planner. Moment of truth. How far are they unfrozen? Uh oh. Oh no. Ain't no grabbing, good grabbing surfaces. Uh, pry bar. This is what I tried a while back to break these apart. And it was so cold and the wood was still so wet that it just chipped the wood. So let's see, maybe it's warm enough now. It's moving, it's moving. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, smells so good in there. This is uh, an inclusion. Oh, you know what this is? Do you guys remember all this came from this one super huge pine tree that was right here? I really didn't want to cut down, but it had this old like, I don't know if it was a break 20 years ago or a giant woodpecker hole or something it looked as though the top which was enormous was just gonna at some point break off and crush my kitchen so we cut it down now we have lumber to build the kitchen this piece right here is that i don't know what you call it bad spot it's probably not great to use structurally for the outside frame of this thing Let's see what the next one's like oh there it is even worse Maybe the next one's better. There we go. That's good lumber. Jeez. That is pretty big. And it's cold enough it shouldn't stick to my butt. All right. Let's think of how we're going to do this. I was wrong. We've been over this with uh, every single build out here, but let me just throw it out there so people know where I'm coming from. I'm going to take one of these huge boards lay it on its edge. Flooring is eventually gonna go on the top of it. So the top you gotta rip off, or one of the sides rather, before you tip it up, gotta rip flat. Has to be like that all the way around. Same with the uh, floor joists. The question is, is there any reason to cut off the bottom? My way of thinking is always, leave that extra wood on the bottom. It just makes the whole thing stiffer. The only place it's really screwed me is on the cabin. If you got floor joists like this and the bottoms aren't flat, you'll never be able to attach anything to the bottom of it. But with this, it's just going to be a floor. I don't think there's any reason. The only reason you'd want to attach something to the bottom is if you wanted to insulate the floor, then you could put wood over the bottom of the insulation just to close it in. There's other ways to do it, but it's way more complicated now in the cabin. Luckily, that bubble foil is working great. But see this big uh, bulge here, this widening? If you went from that end all the way to this end, you'd end up cutting off three or four inches of wood right there. I don't see any reason to do that. So how about we just pull these out, snap some lines, we'll cut the edges and then maybe maybe you guys can help pick up one end and we'll go set them somewhere. I just don't like freeloaders, okay? 
you can sit there watching as long as you want. As long as just every now and then when I need it, you stand up, offer your services. It's trying to be springtime. I'm just going to fill my water bottle from my big jug here. I thought it was sawdust on it, but I haven't been cutting anything over here. Look at that, it's bugs. Where are these bugs coming from? It's been above freezing for about six minutes. I'm not very good at uh, asking people to like and subscribe and all that crap. I think it's pretty gross. I'm not, also don't like to push merch or anything, but if anybody's interested, Sarah did make me some uh, t-shirts and stickers and stuff a while back. I don't think I've ever mentioned it. If you want, they're out there. If you don't want, that's fine too. You definitely, I wouldn't bother liking or subscribing. What is this, some sort of capitalist society? We're in the woods, man. Ain't no society out here. Can't fit. I'm gonna break my damn ankle if I don't get rid of this thing. <laughs> now where do I put these things? Wow, that's some pretty nice ice, isn't it? Let's save that for my drinks. All right, that's where you come in. You get that end. Seriously, where am I gonna put these? I don't have any place to stack stuff. You know how whenever I cut down trees out here, I always leave the stumps? I took some of them out just because there were so many right here and because a lot of them were aspen and aspen stumps just rot out really fast. I should have freaking left some of them. I need some of them that are 10 feet or a little less apart to do all this ripping on and eventually to pile stuff on. You could use uh, saw horses if you had real flat ground. The only downside is, you know, they gotta be perfectly flat to lay a big old board on it. And then you gotta make sure with a chainsaw you don't cut through the saw horse so you're constantly shifting the board back and forth. And then also when the boards are icy like this, they tend to just, as soon as you get the chainsaw going, the uh, teeth grip in and it just pulls the board off the sawhorse. Stumps are the way to go. A couple of really big stumps and then you can use uh, the dogs, pounding some dogs to hold the board in place. And as I'm recalling now, do you remember how heavy these things were? Yeah, the tree's right there. That stump, we felled the tree down the hill. I couldn't carry the boards from 10 feet that side of that stump to this pile because they're too heavy. So I think my only option is to rip them like this, plane the edges, and then slide them onto something. 12, <laughs> 12 and a half feet. Dang. I can't just throw them in the snow. Maybe we could pull them onto the trailer for now and then restack them. Oh, it's going to be a lot of lumber moving. You know, there are a lot of other YouTube channels out there, you know, guys building stuff, but are they doing it all with the chainsaw from trees on their own property? And are they inundating you with all the uh, pain in the assness of uh, building like this? I could edit this down to like five minutes and you'd think I really knew what I was doing. Maybe I should do that one time. I should pre-cut all the lumber so it looks store-bought. No. Why would you want to watch anybody build something with store-bought lumber? <laughs> That's for sissies.
I was just listening to something recently and they brought up how any of the receptors in your body can get overstimulated and then they kind of stop working. Like apparently, I don't know if this is true, any of those crazy hot sauce lovers out there, that if you eat the hottest hot sauce possible and just freaking scorch your taste buds, you then have a window where you can do it again and you won't feel the heat. But I mean, it has to be so hot that like it completely doesn't burn out, but overloads your uh, heat receptors on your tongue. What made me think of that just now is I love the smell of two stroke engines. Makes me think of like back in the day, being a kid, being out on the lake was always like two stroke engines on the boats. And then later on snowmobiles and then, you know, starting chainsaw and it's that same smell. But the last few years I got so overloaded that I don't really smell it anymore. Now, if I work for like one day and then a week later, Sarah comes here, she's like, wow, your clothes really stink like two stroke. It's been a few months since I really started a chainsaw. And now that my, everything's calmed down in my nose, it smells freaking great again. <laughs> I love the smell. Life's all about the little pleasures, you know? It's also uh, my pet theory for why you know how back scratches feel so good for about five minutes and then you hit a wall and they don't feel like anything anymore? I think that's what it is. I don't have real hard scientific proof for that, but it makes sense. Overstimulated back scratch receptors. This is absolutely a stupid thing to do, but that's what I'm all about. Logox sent me this uh, beautiful tool a while back. You guys have seen me drag logs and rounds around and everything. I always use that uh, hookaroon or pickaroon, that spike with a handle. You just stick in the end of the log and you drag. A lot of times it pops off and you go flying. I've wanted something to pick up logs, and this was clearly the thing to do it. I didn't know it had all these attachments. I haven't had a chance to use it at all. So you can use it as a log jack, you know, picks the log up here so you can chop it without uh, hitting the ground. I guess you could take these off and get rid of the jack part. That's awesome how easy it is to take apart. Now you've got like a cant hook for rolling logs or you pull this out and this is what I wanted it for. It's just a beefy handle and a nice mechanism to pick logs up and drag them by hand. I was just about to walk these uh, 30 feet and grab my little log jacks. But I thought, you know, Ryan, are you going to pick those up by hand? That'd be not very hard, but it might get my gloves wet. Anyway, let's try this thing out. Oh, well, there's a squirrel sitting on top of it. I guess he is uh, right away. Oh, thank you. Let's see. You should just be able to go like this. And Wow, that's freaking easy. That thing bites great. Question is how big a log could you pick? Well, you get at least 12. I like it. I think it's gonna be great. If it works a second time. Oh yeah, it does. Before I got this thing, this is also crazy well made. It's a still, so it kind of makes sense. I don't think you could break this if you wanted to. Well, Tito probably could. But before I got that, that thing's expensive. I tried to save some money by using this. This is a log jack. Not really meant to roll logs around, but it just didn't seem beastly enough. Like every time I jacked up a huge log, I felt like I was gonna break this thing. I don't know, maybe that's not being fair because I didn't break it. I have a feeling you'll be seeing more of this thing. I just wanted to show it to you. Didn't want log ox to think that I uh, got it and sold it on eBay or something. They thought this is only three uses. It's actually four. It's a frozen lumber separatorator. How great does that work? Look at that. <laughs> you can even drag uh, boards with it, lumber. It's not easy to get a good grip on a giant frozen board like that. How cool is that? Mm. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. That's the long side, and we just need two more. We'll use those, the thinnest of the 12 footers. Yeah, actually, those two right there would be great. One mistake I made doing a floor frame like this, the first, I think it's the first one I built, was the man cave, and I did not use fat enough joists. I think I had my dad look up the chart to see, you know, for the span, which is like 10 feet, you know, it needed to be two by sixes, eights, twelves, whatever. And I think I did the right size for those, but the big frame around the outside, which is where all the weight is, unless you're, you know, putting a water bed right in the middle of the building, those I did the same size. And if you sight down it, you can see that it's got a little dip. One day, I don't know, maybe when it gets real bad, I'll go and use that big fun hydraulic jack, jack it up in the middle and then put a nice fat board on all the sides. Make most sense to do that right now, but I'm kind of busy. Ooh, I like the shape of this. See all these weird twists and turns on the outside? I might put those aside and use them for the uh, kitchen counter. Being a guy that just tries to live his life uh, one day at a time, I sometimes almost forget what I'm doing. You know, my brain's completely focused on ripping these boards and making the floor. I'm like, oh, it's it's a kitchen I'm building. <laughs> it's gonna have a sink and a refriger refrigerator. Technically an ice box, but we're gonna make it look like a wooden refrigerator, I think. And if it's gonna have a sink, then it has to have its own water tower to gravity feed the water down. And then of course it has to drain somewhere. I don't have any idea how we're gonna do that, but while I'm doing the drudge labor, it's, uh nice on the brain to think about all the fun stuff we'll get to do once the bottom of it's put together. Don't you think these uh, weird shapes and knots and everything will make a cool countertop? I always like to leave that live edge on the outside if the live edge is nice and weird like that. Sorry, I don't know why I'm telling you that. It's not like you didn't know that from the last uh, hundred and however many videos. Oh, really, Ryan? You like a live edge on your countertops? I find that if I don't square the ends of these, wow, that one's actually really close. That's the problem, is I'll go and cut however many feet and inches I need out of this thing and forget that this hasn't been squared. And then I gotta resize everything down so I can trim the ends. So even though just one end is gonna be cut off and then you'd only have to square the other one, best to do it ahead of time. Another time it's nice if this is on a stump so it doesn't just roll around. That'll do it. Went in the cabin for a few, take my boots off and relax for a minute. And I was like, oh no, it's it's nighttime. And you come out here, not nearly as dark. It's really dark in the cabin. I'm kind of thinking maybe this summer I should put a skylight in there, like a big one. Oh, you know what would be rad if it was uh, one that opened. Can't do a power one, but they got some that have like a long crank. And then you could get some ventilation in there in the summer. Yep, we're doing it. Oh man, why didn't I always do this at night? I can see it on every single log. Of course, I can only video this for about eight more seconds before it gets too dark. How cool is that? It actually reaches out uh, a good 20 feet. That's gonna be way easier than usual. I'm thinking cram this time because what I'm Working is actually dry for a change. 
Yeah, I think that'll work good. Well, that'll work well. Jeez, Pete. What are you, my English teacher? Oh, crap, I forgot to... I don't think I put these the straightest way up. Oh, man, that sucks. Remember, I put that uh, whole bunch of coats of motor oil on the bottom side of these and then just flipped them over and never straightened them. The concrete's not perfectly flat, so sometimes you get a little wiggle room. All right, let's try this again. No, no I'm just gonna sawzall it. Screw it! Yeah, that's actually the easiest way and probably most precise. It actually looks like daytime on that camera, but it's not. The trick is to turn this thing without screwing it up. Get all the rest of them. Oh, it's getting too dark. It looks so cool at night to do this because the, uh, the blade glows. If you do it right, you can't see the line at all because it's on the very back of the blade. I just checked the weather. Uh, it's 32 right now. It's a high of 50 today. What? And tomorrow night it's uh, 10 degrees and three inches of snow. So we're gonna get uh, done whatever we can get done today. Since these are all faced a certain direction and they go on a certain stump here, I'm just gonna mark them all. So let's say, mark them on the uphill side. That's number one, two, Probably should peel all of these all the way around. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Five upside down. Is that the right way? I bet that's backwards. <laughs> Let's leave it. You guys know what a fan of winter I am and how much I don't like this warm, coldest part of the year crap. However, if you get a couple days like this, it's a godsend come springtime. Because uh, like two 50 degree days, we'll have mosquitoes. And then f deep freeze them. You get far less bugs in the springtime if you can do that. Those look level, good enough. All right, now there are two different ways to do this. Chop down here and out there a little bit. The board sits in there, you can screw it to this. The only thing I don't like about that, as most of you know, is when eventually the bottom of this rots out, it's a little bit harder to replace this. You could cut out the rotted spot and put something else underneath there or just drop the deck a bit. I just like setting stuff on top of these. If just free floats on top of that, it doesn't seem to go anywhere. And you can jack it up, put a new stump in, you're good to go. Now, anybody remember how this was laid out? I think the roof goes on this half, and I think we designed it to go right to that middle row of stumps. The other half is uncovered. So there's not really going to be any weight on that half except for like countertop and maybe some cabinets or refrigerator or whatever, ice box. So any weight on the floor is going to be on this half. The only reason it matters and it doesn't matter that much is uh, there's a little variation in some of those boards. So I'll just put the fattest boards on this side. Yeah, it's hard to tell. I think this one looks fatter than the rest. And that one looks like the skinniest. 
mega fatty one. Uh oh, somebody didn't measure right. <laughs> I just got confused for a minute. Just ignore me, would you? This is quite possibly going to be the stickiest day of my life. The sapwood is just, just about to drip. As soon as that nice hot sun gets on it, it's just gonna leak out on everything. It's all right if it ruins a pair of gloves or two, but it takes a lot of time with a Q-tip and a huge jar of uh, rubbing alcohol to clean that damn camera off. Let's find the skinniest end of one of these boards. That's 12. That looks fat. Yeah, we could sneak it to 10. Ooh, what about this guy? 10? Yeah, we could do 10 on that one too. All right, notch them all out to 10 inches. Let's cut a little extra out of here in case we ever want to replace with some fatter logs. Let's go there. This is a good candidate for something you cut out with a chainsaw. But it took so much time to make this perfectly flat. I'm going to use the circular saw and then finish it with the jigsaw. There's a lot of stuff I don't mind cutting with the chainsaw if I can run the planer over afterwards to kind of fix it up if I didn't keep the bar perfectly vertical or, you know, wiggled too much. But there's no way to fix that with the planer. That I know of anyway, but I'm kind of dumb. It's so sticky, it almost doesn't slide. Uh, let's just go about there. Beautiful. Holy cow. <laughs> when you set it like that, that is a big chunk of lumber. This thing is not going to go anywhere. Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> That's great. 2 by 14. Uh-oh. Oh, no. What did I do wrong? Oh. I think I measured a foot off. Dag nabbit. No, I didn't. What's going on? Something's off like a foot. About six feet to center. Six feet to center. What in the heck? Anybody remember when we dug the holes and poured the footings here? Maybe there was a giant rock here or something I couldn't move, so I had to slide the pad over. Plus that log round is lean to the right, so that amplifies it a little bit. But geez and pizzas, look how far off that is. I'm sure it's hard for you to believe that when this happens, I actually think it's kind of fun. <laughs> I mean, if everything goes to plan, what are you doing it for? You know, you, you can just buy a kitchen. You can have somebody build you a kitchen. It's the figuring and working through your mistakes that makes it interesting. Let's start. See how level that is. That's pretty good. What happens if you twist it? Lean it the other way. Oh, that looks bad. Wow. Yeah, I can't do that. We could slide it. You know something I saw recently? Remember when I rebuilt the uh, tent deck and put all those concrete pads in here exactly like this and log rounds for feet? There are a couple spots where I had to put the foot way off on the side of the concrete. And it must have been one of the pads that was just on dirt, which is not normal out here. Almost always the pad is like on top of a huge rock or something. And already by now, the concrete pad is tipped up like that. So we don't want to fudge this too much. I just twisted the log 180 and moved it to the left here, which is uphill. So it's sitting on that end. It's sitting on that end. And the board is bowed up here. 
So I think I just measure this amount here and trim it off of here. I think it's gonna work. It's actually a good thing when your concrete pads aren't perfectly level because you can fudge things like this. This is the high spot, three quarters about right there. Perfect, this is gonna work. Maybe, maybe. If I wanna take my cut starting at the thickest part I'm gonna cut off, you gotta know where the highest spot is. Is it here, is it here, is it here? I think I showed you this trick before. Get the bubble right in the middle and it's 90 degrees to that. So this right here is the high spot. And we just wanna make sure we pop out early. I don't actually wanna to try to connect with this exact edge right here because if I do it a little bit too deep, I can't fix it. If you just take a slice off the top here, you can brush the whole thing down to flat. It almost sounds like I know what I'm doing, but make it up as you go. Cut this a little bit wider. Bet it'll work now. We're back in business. Just had to take a quick break to uh, take off all my winter clothes, my winter boots, and put a little sunscreen on my neck. It's pretty gnarly Michigan winter. Just tack these together. That's all sap. It's like sap and then sawdust and sap and sawdust. Gnarly. Now the oh so important test is the site. Wow. That side is perfect. I don't think any of the rest will be. Wow, this is just one board. But it's touching all three stumps and it looks pretty darn good. I'm very happy with that. I'm sure you all got it as I was doing this, or you've seen me do this before, but this 10-inch uh, measurement, so this is the skinniest board, the shortest board this way. Skinniest, thinnest, shortest, stumpiest, least girthly. So I use that measurement and make them all the same, so you can see how much thicker this was. I had to cut out like three or four inches there, but it makes the top nice and flat. And as far as support, you have a minimum of a two by 10 around the outside, but in reality, it's a lot bigger than that. The only place that's two by 10 is like right here. And then it goes to much bigger. And you know, these are two by 14s. I think leaving that extra on does it does keep it from flexing. Like that sucker's never gonna move. Now we gotta figure something else uh, just like that. We gotta put this uh, support beam down the middle and it's there not to plug the floor joist into it, but to have the floor joist sit on top so we can have full length 12 foot joists with support underneath them. But we don't know what our thinnest floor joist is yet. So we don't know how far down to set that support beam. And then this is also kind of uh, <laughs> circular. You gotta figure all this stuff out at the same time. I also can't mark out the joists because the size of the joist Will make a difference on the spacing so if they only end up being like two by sixes then they're all going to have to be really close together like 12 inches on center if i rip all those big boards down and they end up being you know two by tens or more then they can be way spread out like every 24 inches so when we go over to uh see how many of these big fat boards we need you don't really know until you start cutting some of them up 
This was the very bottom log from that tree and I cut them 12 feet just for this. So it looks like if we did the biggest boards, it's almost 24, which means it'll be more like 20 or 22. So we might get two by tens, probably be like two by nines or something. And then we'll put a little tiny notch right in the middle of them uh, for that support beam. Is all this making sense to you? I'm not even really convinced it's making sense to me, but you know, just keep plowing forward and somehow this stuff works out. I know I say this a lot, but if this looks fun, you should really try it. I mean, if I ever accidentally owned my own house, I'm not sure I would try my hand at making lumber and figuring out how to like frame the floor of an actual kitchen. But if you got a little piece of property out in the woods, doesn't make a difference if a floor sags a little bit, go do it. It's pretty fun. I mean, it's reasonably fun if, you know, you like working in oh, oppressive heat. All right, we'll each grab an end and we'll start pulling these out of here and ripping sides off. Yep, for that, you are? Wow. Might be 50 degrees out here, but these are still froze. Yeah. Great tool, did I mention that? The best you can do with these, splitting them down the middle, I found, is not really much you can measure from, so just lay a chalk line on it and kind of eyeball it. Looks like I got the other end pretty close. Does that look straight to you? Looks pretty straight to me. That's 10, that ought to do it, I hope. Well, I don't know why the sun insists on going down. It doesn't seem very fair. But uh, after a couple few days of doing this, my back's uh, tired. My front's tired too. So I gotta put my tools away and uh, gotta get out my rubbing alcohol and clean all my tools off before I put them away. Last thing you wanna do is grab them with a bare hand. You could be scarred for life just like I am after oh, just touching my tripod. It's all covered in stickum. So I'm listening to this podcast. You know what I just heard? That still today, you can buy your own train car, customize it however you want, pay Amtrak to store it for you, and then you can pay them to hook it up to their regular old passenger trains and pull you around the country. I gotta say, that's really got my, my brain cranking. That might be a good uh, future project. Get an old train car. Many years ago I had a, a similar idea which was to buy a, maybe I told you this before, buy an old pontoon boat, just keep the frame and the two floats, build it into whatever kind of weirdo houseboat, boat, drive it way up north to the headwaters of the Mississippi and float all the way down. How fun would that be? And then I did some reading and it turns out the Mississippi is really big, really flat, Hardly any of it is wild, and there's tons of boat traffic, barges, and a lot of commercial ships and stuff. So instead, I bought a kayak <laughs> and kayaked down a whole bunch of the Missouri River. But an Amtrak train, that'd be pretty sweet, wouldn't it? I guess we'll throw this under the tarp since 24 hours, it, ugh, everything will be covered in snow. I don't know when the storm breaks or what it's supposed to be like the next week, but if you'd like to come back, 
come on back. I've got a couple of really fun small projects and they can both be done in the cabin and in the man cave with the heat on. So uh, the weather's crap, we'll do that. See you next Saturday morning, if you're, if you're not busy. I mean, if you got stuff going on, it's all right, you don't have to watch. Yeah, it's amazing how much you can get done in a couple days if you already have the uh, lumber milled up. This must be what it's like to be a normal person. Peace. See you next week.